spirit. Some people fear it. Some people just won't go near it. Hey guys, I am the Comics Kid 2099 and I am here to talk a little bit about The Legend of Korra Season 2. Over the weekend, the first two episodes of the second season of this series premiered, and as I said earlier this week, I was away from the house over the weekend. I had no television or internet of any kind until I got back home late Saturday night, and today, Monday, that's the day I'm filming this, I went ahead and watched the first two episodes of The Legend of Korra Season 2. This season is titled Spirits, and we have known very little about what was going to be happening in the season. Or at least, I have known very little. I've seen a couple of character designs, and I figured, okay, spirit, so it's going to be about the spirit world. That was about all I knew. So it was pretty much, it was really enjoyable for me anyway to go into this season not really knowing what was going to be going on. And I still don't know what's going to be going on. I don't know if this season is going to be 13 episodes like the first season, or if it's going to be longer. I know in the past, this is an avatar that I'm talking about, but there are some shows where the first season is shorter than the rest of the series, and I'm not sure if that's what's going to be going on here. So I don't know if we've only got 11 more episodes of this season left, or if we've got like 24 more episodes. I guess we will find out as we keep going. So I basically had two things that I absolutely had to have for this season in order to walk away very happy. And the first one was I did not want to see any pro bending at all. And this is a minor spoiler, not a very huge one. There was a pro bending match that opened up this episode. Now, it opens in such a way where I feel very confident that we are not going to see any more pro bending at all, and I'm absolutely happy with that. I was always the least interested in this show when the pro bending was at the forefront of an episode. I thought it was a good device to get Korra to meet Mako and Bolin, but I really didn't think that we needed to keep seeing it after we introduced all these characters to each other. And it definitely seems like Mako and Bolin are going to be part of the adventure now, but we're not going to have four or five episodes of this season that are dedicated to let's win this match. I really don't have to see that, and if they somehow manage to go in that direction, I will be very disappointed. But from what I've seen in the first two episodes, it doesn't look like that's going to be happening, so yay. The other thing that I wanted to see, so far we have not seen it, but I am still holding out hopes, and that is Ko the Face Stealer. If you ever saw Avatar The Last Airbender, he was in one episode, I believe, and Aang went to him for advice, but Ko, the spirit who steals faces from people if they change their facial expression while he's speaking with them, he said, I will meet you again someday, Avatar. And I think it would be just awesome if Ko meets Korra and they actually fight each other. You know, the last time when Aang saw Ko, it was kind of a peaceful encounter, although a little bit menacing. So I really think it would be nice if Ko was a full-on villain now, since this season is titled Spirits. I think that would make a lot of sense. Now, I'm not really sure if this season has any room for that, because this is a huge spoiler. So if you have not seen the first two episodes of this season, go ahead and mute the video while I have my thumb up. Once my thumb goes down, I will no longer be spoiling, at least for this part. But while my thumb is up, I will be spoiling. So, spoilers! Korra has seemingly already restored balance between the spirit world and the physical world in the second episode of this season. I don't know what that leaves for her to do for the remainder of this season. I kind of have an idea, but it seems a little bit strange that this season is titled Spirits when her conflict with the spirit world has already kind of been resolved. Okay, no more spoilers. Now, it is possible that we are going to have future conflicts with the spirit world in the rest of the season, and if that happens, then yay, maybe we will see Ko. For now, I'm just hoping that we will see Ko, or maybe that monkey, you know, the one who is always telling Aang, shh, I'd really love to see that guy too. Overall, I think that Season 2 is actually stronger than the first two episodes of Season 1, if I'm being honest. Season 1... I was kind of a little iffy on it because I really didn't like Korra. I really didn't like some of the things that we saw her do. I definitely didn't like Pro Bending, and that was introduced relatively early in Season 1. This season, I'm already enjoying it quite a bit. I really love the conflict that we've got. I am a little bit weary of the conflict that Korra is having with other characters. In the first couple of episodes, we see her 
pretty much being just a jerk to Mako. She yells at him no matter what he does, she's always frustrated with him. And this goes all the way back to my problems with the character of Korra. I've said before that Aang is an inspirational figure. You look to him and you say, I want to be more like that guy. He is calm, he thinks before he goes into action, and he's all around a really nice guy. And then you look to Korra and she's more of a relatable character. She's angry, she's impulsive, she punches before she thinks. And while that may be more realistic for a 16 year old, it also makes the character infinitely less likable in my humble opinion. Now there are times when Korra is being sassy to someone who deserves it and you're like, yeah, Party on, Korra! But then there are times when she's yelling at Tenzin, or yelling at Mako, and it's just like, come on, Korra, you're better than this. These people are trying to help you. And I don't feel like she's ever really going to come out of this. I feel like no matter how long The Legend of Korra keeps going, by the end of this series, I am still going to think that Aang is a better character than Korra. One conflict I am very interested in is the conflict between Korra's father and her uncle. Her uncle is the chief of the Northern Water Tribe, and her father, this is another spoiler so thumb is going up, her father used to be from the Northern Water Tribe. Yeah, what? That was crazy. I did not see that coming. And the conflict between these two is really interesting because it's not easy to pick a side. I feel like at times her uncle makes a lot of sense in what he is doing. And then he turns around and does something that seems very evil. And you're like, wait, what? what's going on here? And then her father, he seems like kind of a jerk. But at the end of the day, you know that he cares for Korra and he wants what's best for her. So it's really hard hard for me to root for one of these guys and I'm not even sure how this conflict between these two is going to be resolved by the end of the season. I don't know if the uncle is going to turn out to be a bad guy. I don't know if he really wants what's best for the Southern Water Tribe. I, I don't know. It's really hard to predict what's going on here. And in a lot of ways, this reminds me of Season 1 of The Legend of Korra. So I'm not going to put my thumb up for this one because if you're watching a video about Season 2, then presumably you've already seen Season 1. But in Season 1, I remember thinking, Tarlock is maybe going to turn out to be Amon. And then that turns out to be completely wrong. And I'm kind of thinking that the uncle, they want us to think that he's a bad guy, but maybe he's not, but maybe he is, and it's really hard to tell just what's going on here. So I am very interested with this family dynamic that's going on. I'm also interested to see what Tenzin and his family are doing. This is another spoiler, so once again, my thumb is going up. In episode one of this season, Korra basically says, Tenzin, I don't want to be your student anymore. I'm going to go with my uncle, and he is going to train me in the ways of the spirit world. And Tenzin's like, okay, fine. So then he takes his family, and they go to the Southern Air Temple. So they're still nearby, but they're not, like, right there in the thick of things with Korra, Mako, Bolin, and her family. And... Tenzin, I'm not entirely sure what's going on here. We get to see his sister and his brother. They're kind of annoying. And then we get to see that something is going on with Tenzin's older daughter. We don't know what it is. I suspect she's going to become more of a major character. Which, if you had asked me when I was watching Season 1, which minor character here would you like to see more of, I would not have said that character. I would have probably said, I don't know, General Iroh or something like that. I really didn't have to see more of this character, but I guess we will see what this season brings us. Maybe I will be surprised, and if I am, then yay, surprises. I'm really kind of interested to see what this season does with Asami. She was kind of a major part of season one, but I feel like at this point, there's really no way to keep her involved in the story, because she is not active in the fighting stuff like the rest of these characters are, so it's really going to be hard to keep her showing up Unless, and I would absolutely love to see this, but I kind of want to see Bolin and Asami get together. I was saying this when I was watching Season 1. I really didn't like the way that Mako and Korra were treating Bolin, and I think it would be a really interesting twist if Bolin and Asami got together. And we see what could be considered a hint of that in the first episode, but then again it could just be a red herring. It could be that these guys don't plan on using Asami anymore. Although that would be kind of a waste of space, I think, if they didn't plan on using Asami in this 
season, but they did use her in the first episode of this season. I would like to see more of her, but right now I don't know what they're going to do with her, so I guess we'll just wait and see on that. Overall, I really love Boleyn, I really love Mako, I really love what we have seen of Korra's uncle and her father. Uh, Tenzin and Korra, they're both basically the same as they were in Season 1. I don't like Korra, but I haven't really liked her this whole time. She shows occasional flashes of, yeah, that's spunky and I like that. But most of the time, she's just way too abrasive for my taste, and she's kind of mean. And overall, I understand why they did what they did with her, because they want to make this character very different from the protagonist of the original series. But in doing so, they have taken a character who is not very likable, in my humble opinion. But maybe they can change that. I don't really think they will. Tenzin, he's not really unlikable like Korra is, but at the same time, he's not really doing anything. He's funny in a few places, and I suspect he will start doing more stuff when, spoiler, his older daughter starts to become more of a major character in this series, but right now, he's just kind of there, taking up space, kind of reminding the audiences, yeah, this guy is part of this show still. So, I guess we'll see what he does. Um, right now, I'm not really hating or loving on him. I'm kind of neutral on Tenzin. And that's about it, guys. I really think the first two episodes of Season 2 were phenomenal, and I'm really hoping that this season ends up all airing back to back, kind of like season one. If you'll recall, in season one, we basically got all the episodes one right after another. I think there might have been one week where we didn't get an episode. I would really love it if that's what happens with season two, because we waited so long for this season. I will be really disappointed if it ends up being like a month long hiatus in between episodes five and six. So, I'm looking forward to the rest of this season. I hope you guys are looking forward to the rest of the season. And if you are not watching this show, I would say just jump right in. It might take you a little while to get used to some of the characters, but I think the story is still very accessible. It's not something where you need a ton of backstory, although I will admit that having that backstory would be helpful, but it is not crucial or necessary to have it. So... Uh, that's all I have to say, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Until then, I will see you guys tomorrow, so keep it real. You know who to call. Ghostbusters.